Hello there. My name is Prasant. I am a cloud solution architect at Microsoft Global Partner Solutions. And with me, I am joined by my colleague architect, George. And today we are super excited to talk about data access challenges and how Microsoft Purview help solving them. Let's look at the typical user journey from a data consumption aspects. It starts with the data discovery. I have seen scenarios where customer or data stewards spending a lot of time tagging or applying sensitivity labels or to classify the content in a data sources. And they store this information in some sort of spreadsheets or documents. It's very hard to keep the documents up to date. Once the data stewards done with labeling or mapping, they involve central IT team for administrative work. Now central IT team has to do a lot of plumbing work in terms of figuring out the authentication authorizations or creating those roles and policies in advance to grant the overall access. In general, this approach is very manual and takes long time to complete and not scalable enough to manage large number of data sources. Now from a request access standpoint, let's say you are putting a request to access the highly sensitive data assets, which goes through several iterations wherein you work with data owners via emails or meeting conversations. In general, this approach takes several weeks to complete and most of the time, the process is not clear and consistent across organizations. So it impacts the overall data analytics and data projects and business users. So these are all the data challenges and day by day it's becoming more challenging as every business has to comply with some sort of privacy laws or internal security standards and processes. Let's discuss how Microsoft Purview helps solving all the data discovery and access challenges we discussed in the previous slide. On the data discovery side, when you register and scan the data sources in Microsoft Purview data map, it automatically does the classification part of scanning. You can use the system provided default classification rules or custom as needed. Data consumers and business users can search and request access to the data sets using Microsoft Purview Catalog or Azure Synapse Analytics Workspace. Self-service data access policy, it's kind of a step-by-step -step workflow process to manage your data access processes. And it empowers the data stewards and data owners with simplified data policy authoring and enforcement capabilities. Instead of pushing more work on central IT team, data owners themselves can provision the data set access at scale for various groups and business units. You will see how the self-service data access policy works and demo in the following section. Using all of these capabilities, you are enabling your business users and customers to get the data faster. So before we see it in action, let's talk about overall prerequisites and steps involved. The first step is to check supported data sources for data access policy. For this, I have already provided a Microsoft Docs link in the references slide. The next thing is, let's say if you are trying to apply these data policies on a specific data sources like uh, ADLS Gen 2 or Azure SQL database, all of them should be registered and set up for scanning in a Purview data map. In the following step, you are assigning the permissions on these data sources so Purview can manage them. The next step is like creating a self-service data access workflow and apply that workflow at the collection level. And once the self-service data access workflow is created and applied at the collection level, you are all set. Now, data consumers can do the data discovery using data catalog and request access to the data assets they like. And once the access is approved, self-service data access policy will be generated automatically. So as of now, this self-service data access workflow feature is in public preview and it supports uh, the data sources listed here in this table. 
if you look at the data store and then the column access policy i think uh, there are uh, blob storage or adls gen 2 or uh, sql database all of them you know supported in preview right now so the uh, as we discussed earlier the very first step is like you know how getting your data sources ready for you know data use management and the way you do is like you know setting uh, up the appropriate permissions so here uh, you know um, uh, this is adls gen 2 storage and i have assigned like you know i am on a role to the microsoft purview account so microsoft purview can you know manage this uh, data source for policy authoring or enforcement the same thing i have done for the sql database level as well so assign the you know owner to the microsoft purview account and once you are done with setting up the appropriate permissions uh, to your data sources the next thing is like setting up the you know uh, permission at the purview collection level so i if you uh, they follow this it's it's my microsoft purview account and i'm uh, in the data map collection and uh, the prerequisite for setting up the collection level permission is apply the uh, you know uh, uh, permission at the uh, as of now root collection level so if you look at this like this is my hierarchical uh, collection and I have my root collection which is on the top and there are other like you know child or uh, uh, kind of a collections created uh, underneath of this one so uh, in order to uh, you know do the uh, self-service data access workflow thing you should be uh, having the permission like as a, as a workflow admin so uh, eight respective you know uh, members like you know part of this workflow admins role and once you are done with setting up the uh, you know uh, permission at the data source and the purview level the next step is like you can enable the data use management at the data source level so now we can go back to the sources uh, and uh, if you look at here it's it's kind of a graphical view of all of the you know um, data sources registered in my uh, purview account and uh, let's pick any uh, one of them so i'm just picking up the azure data like gen 2 and once you click on edit here you get the option to enable the data use management and if you have like you know followed all the you know prerequisite steps and and configured the uh, appropriate permissions and everything then you should be able to enable the uh, data use management at the data source level so once you are done with you know the uh, data use management then uh, the next step is like you know authoring the actual self-service data access workflow so let's go to management and then uh, the authoring and uh, as you can see here i have already created one uh, you know self-service data access workflow but let me just quickly walk you through uh, just by creating one uh, so just create a new and uh, select the governance option here continue i'm just doing this uh, data access request and uh, let's give it a name and hit continue so here we get it's it's kind of a uh, blueprinted uh, template you, you it's automatically gets created once you you know create this uh, self-service access workflow so and and uh, you know in addition to what the options you you see here you can do like different uh, kind of customizations as well for example uh, in each stage like you know you can do various customization for example in the start and wait for an approval right uh, you can put specific kind of a data owners or who should it go to for the approvals so you can put uh, respective you know uh, emails or kind of a you know respective identity here so it will go back to the uh, review and approval purpose now in addition to the uh, review and approval there are other let's say once the access uh, request is you know uh, kind of a approved right uh, you can again initiate some email conversation to the requester and when you initiate that email uh, you know, uh, you can put some dynamic content, for example, you know, uh, here there are some fields like, you know, what's the data assets name, what's the description, you know, 
those kind of so it gives more kind of a you know clarity to the requester like who has requested and and when was it requested uh, you know and those all kind of a you know uh, meaningful kind of a data metadata along with the email you know so uh, you can do this and one more thing i want to highlight let's say uh, in addition to, there are some data sources like you know let's say not supported by self service data access workflow in that case you can kind of you know create a custom action here like assign to someone uh, kind of a operation team manually like hey uh, this please grant access to this data asset uh, you know manually something like that so you can come up with some uh, you know manual action as well and assign uh, to the respective operation or other teams so once you are done with all of your like you know customized settings and uh, applied all the you know different options then you can just you know um, uh, save and close it but right now just like you know i have already created one so let's uh, uh, use this one and once you are done with the creating the self-service access workflow you can apply at the uh, collection level so just select your workflow and just apply at the uh, you know collection level so here you can see the uh, collection what i already have you know created and uh, you can apply at the collection level now once you applied at the collection level right uh, you are all set right like now the thing is data ex data consumers right like they can do the data discovery you know data preview kind of a thing using data catalog right and and request access to the data assets they like and once they request access to the data assets uh, it it pops up here like if you go to the request and approvals uh, if you see here there are some pending requests uh, you know like it's in my queue like it's waiting for my approval right and once you click on one of the requests it will give you like a uh, more detail like you know who uh, like some of the data consumer like requested access to a specific data assets or something you know so uh, and you can just do like a approval or rejection right on top of the uh, uh, you, you see the request here you will also get uh, you can configure like receiving an email so this is the sample email like where you know i got an email like hey uh, data consumer person x trying to you know request access to these specific data assets uh, it's waiting for your approval or something right and um, uh, once let's say you approve the uh, request right you can check the uh, workflow runs and everything here let me show you so let's say you uh, you know approved the request right so you can just check your uh, workflow run history from here so it will show like all of the previous like you know workflow whatever like failed or success whatever with status and everything so i had uh, several requests you know came in and uh, whatever so it shows all of them uh, here uh, with the appropriate status and initiated by you know what was the data assets uh, for which it requested everything you can see like uh, as a run history here and once the data access request is approved right uh, the self-service access poli policy gets generated automatically so if i show you a couple of uh, let's look at here in the data policy section and if you go to self-service access policy right these are the policy, uh, you know, it, it was automatically generated based on the access approval. So uh, you, did, you don't need to create them like, you know, manually. And this is where like it's like associated with that data use management thing, right? Like, uh, you know, you are delegating that access control responsibility to Microsoft Purview so it can do that kind of, you know, policy authoring and enforcement uh, on top of those data sources. Hey George, thank you for joining us. Can you tell us about the data consumption journey and walk us through how data consumers will do the data discovery, request access, and analyze the data using tools such as Synapse or Power BI? Absolutely, Prashant. Thanks for having me. Accessing the data is really important, so I'd be more than happy to give you a demonstration and talk about the data access piece of uh, purview. So the first thing to note is you're going to be requesting access through the purview system. So when you browse a catalog or 
finish discovering the data. When you do all of the reader type or consumer type of actions within purview as data governance dictates in your own organization, you'll find little tidbits of data that you actually find useful in existing uh, analytic reports or existing projects that you have. So you'll request uh, the access through purview, but you can do it inside of Synapse, and that's what I'll be showing you today. So when you do that, we'll be using a few of the preview features of purview, which are the workflow or self-service data access. And those are quite interesting and unique because it allows the data owner to be able to control the access to the data as well as the freedom for the consumers of the collection within purview, which is just the, the bucket of data that you're allowed to explore, the ability to explore that data. And when they want access, then they can re request specific access to the data. They don't have to be granted all the access. So we can get into a little bit of the prerequisites if you move the slide. And really it's the data reader role. So it is the lowest role within the purview collection level. And that will allow you to explore that specific collection. And then when you find the, uh, you know, the nuggets of gold that you want to include in your analytic report, then you'll be able to request that specific access. And we'll be demoing this through Azure Data Lake. And when we access Azure Data Lake resources, we'll be demonstrating the access part of it, the consumer part of it within Power BI as well as Synapse. And I'll begin. Okay, so you can see I'm inside of Synapse right now. And within Synapse, I'll be able to click on the data piece of it. And as you can see, once I click on the master search or the global search bar, you'll see here that I am in purview. And within purview, I can search for things like uh, employee, because that's uh, what I'm going to look for now. And within that search result, this is actually uh, what you'll see within Synapse. So in here, you can do a lot of the filtering. You can search for different uh, security labels. If security labels are active within your data set, you'll be able to search for uh, contacts. So if you know that a uh, certain person has data that you find interesting, then you'll be able to uh, filter the data sets for those. But for me, I just explored with the keyword employee and I find that this CSV is interesting. Uh, so I'll click on it. I'll look at some of the attributes of that. So it's, shows me that some of the schemas, uh, the tags are person's name. So that is protected information. So based on the uh, policies that your organization employs, this may or may not be uh, suitable to consume. But you can access all of that within purview and uh, you know, including the properties. If you wanted to know a little bit more about that piece of uh, data, you can see who the owners are or the experts and uh, ping them separately before you actually request, request access. And then once you're ready to request the access, you just simply hit the request access button. And in that button, you'd want to give a description of why you're requesting it. And it's as simple as that. Once that gets executed, it'll go through the self-service workflow. And within that workflow, you'll be able to be granted access or not. Thank you, Josh, for showing that request access thing. Got a quick question. If there are some data sources not supported for self-service auto policy creation process, how does workflow manage that situation? Sure. Prashant, that's a great question. So in the event that there is a data set uh, 
that you want access as a self-service and it is not yet supported, you can still leverage the self-service pieces within Purview. And as you can see, uh, my Synapse was connected to Purview. And right now we're actually inside of the Purview interface. And inside of Purview, you'll have access to the workflows that you've executed. So in the event that the workflow that you're setting up for self-service does not have the uh, supported uh, hooks into the back end of Purview, you can still set up the self-service. So as you can see here, this is the self-service that was configured for a particular data set that is not yet supported for full self-service. So in the step where you get approved, it does get assigned to someone. And in that approval, you'll see that uh, in the self-service workflow, a task gets created for the individual. Uh, in this case, it's uh, to Prashant. And in the, in the self-service piece, it won't go forward until that task is actioned. So they can deny, they can uh, reply it's being worked on, or they can send the accepted. So this allows for unsupported data sets to also participate in the self-service. And all this allows you to do is a, you've assigned a specific individual to go into the actual data set or the da data system and provide manual access. But you can do it and manage it, manage the, the workflow at least, uh, the process through Purview. So I hope that answers your question. We can jump back to uh, Synapse. So once you have access, you'll be able to go in and let's say, you know, I requested access to this specific CSV. So here you'd be able to go to the develop piece of Synapse and using Spark, you'll do a, you know, top 100 uh, query. And in that query, you just click run and you'll see that now you have actual access to that specific CSV. All right, and there's the results. So that's how that works. All right, so let's say I wanted something a little bit more complex. So when I go and try to access the piece that is uh, a little bit more robust as far as data is concerned, uh, let's search for city, for example. And within city, I want to search more as a hierarchy. <clears throat> so whether that's a text file or parquet files, uh, I want to leverage the uh, data lake piece of it. So hierarchical namespace searches are also supported. So here you'll see uh, that this is a pattern that is underneath the folder city. So that's exactly what I'm looking for. Uh, so I'll go ahead and uh, request access for this. Uh, I've uh, already requested the access. So I can go and demo uh, the the actual query. So within here, you'll see that uh, the query is the same and it treats the several files that are underneath the folder as one data set. And you'll see that uh, the results come back and everything looks correct. All right, so let's talk about how to access this through Power BI. So from here, I will have access to the URL, and then I'll jump over to Power BI. So within Power BI, we'll do get data, and within the get data connectors, we'll search for the lake. And here we'll use ADLS Gen 2 and connect. Hey, George, got a question here. Um, sure. Can you tell us more about this authentic authentication part? What's the difference between ADLS root level versus item level? Yeah, absolutely. That's a great question because this is what a lot of uh, users get hung up on. 
when you are requesting access to different resources within purview, it is at the item level. So you need to remember that when you are connecting an existing report or a report where you want multiple connections or multiple data sets from purview, you need to, even though they're all coming from the same route, you need to provide it at the lowest level possible. So at the item level, if you don't, then your uh, authentication will run into some problems and you may not get the results that you want. It might supersede and you'll have different uh, errors when you are refreshing your report because of the data sets are disconnected. So again, this is the key to be able to uh, analyze several different data sets in one report is making sure that when you authenticate, always authenticate to the resource that you're actually being given permission to see, which is in our case here, it's at uh, the city level, which is the lowest level in this dropdown. So we'll go ahead and uh, authenticate. See if it works. And here we have uh, four files. So we'll combine and just do the transform. So you'll see that it combines the data set into, or the different files into one data set for you. So you can consume it. And there it is. That is the combined data set for the folder of city within Azure Data Lake. Hopefully this uh, helps in understanding how to use Purview as a data consumer and be able to not only explore the different data sets that are available in the collection, but also to request access to those data sets and request it in a secure manner, in a manner that is managed and has several different processes around it. Did you have any other questions for Sean? Yeah, thank you for showing us and, and walking through this journey. You got one more question like, uh, as you are browsing and, and uh, you know analyzing this data, what are the different ways to analyze these requested data sets? Because uh, can you walk us through with some uh, examples or best practices on that? Sure. So the best way to access the data is through Synapse and Power BI. So whether you do it within Synapse or outside of Synapse, the supported data sets really around the self-service piece for right now are going to be Synapse and Power BI. If you try to access that same data set, even though you can see it within Power BI and, and Synapse, for example, if you go to the portal or if you go to uh, the storage explorer or try to access it in most other ways right now, it will not show. Uh, it has to do with the backend permissions and how they're assigned. But right now, the way to actually consume this data are going to be the Synapse or the Power BI pieces. Thank you, George, for showing us different ways and best practices on how we can simplify data access management and oral data consumption journey. And with that, we are done with the today's session. I would highly encourage to check out this uh, learning resources and provide us feedback. And if you are interested in attending any on-demand or live content specific to Microsoft Purview, please check this enable Purview link. We hope you find this session useful and we appreciate you joining us today. Thank you. <laughs>